Chichica Vale pa'l cheche Do copale Do I started just imitating people when I first started performing with my old funk, funk band Jazzberries, which was super fun, but I just wanted to be like Lynn Collins, or I just wanted to be these um, Marva Whitney funk queens from the 70s. I just wanted to sound like them. And so I didn't really care much if I did, if I, about sounding like myself. That wasn't the point. I wasn't trying to sound like myself. So then I started seeing um, a singing coach called Judith Mock, who's a, she's actually a Dutch opera singer, but she's an incredibly gifted um, teacher or coach just at bringing people into their own voices. So she kind of gives you technique with the view to using it for what is rightfully and naturally yours. So we've been working together for the past four years and ever since then, my voice has become more full-bodied and I've become physically stronger to support the voice. So I can just actually just sing louder and access all these um, muscles and subtleties that I couldn't access before. And that maybe that's why my songwriting keeps exploding because like, I'm like, oh, I can do this now. <laughs> shy away from having like a ridiculously classical chord progression it's juxtaposed with like you know a, something practically lifted out of a Stevie Wonder piece like it doesn't phase me to wear my influences on my sleeve and um, but but you can't call it one thing and um, so I, I just refer to it as it's just art so made of various forms of art and um, and some and then it, it leaves it really open because um, I arranged a a really old 16th century piece by a Polish composer um, for lute, which was written for lute, um, just found it in a random search on the internet and I decided I was going to um, arrange it for five voices, five female voices. And like, where on earth do you, how do you generalise <laughs> that desire? Um, and I want to carry that song with me, I don't want to just not perform it because it doesn't Bit because I supposedly play like indie music or something. So I was like, right, art soul, and you just, you have to come with me. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> There's certain core features. I think instrumentation is a big one and my voice. So more often than not, a melody will just come into my head when I'm not trying to write. And when I'm doing my laundry or cooking or um, walking to the shop and I'll be like, oh, gotcha. And you know, pull out the phone. And that's or almost always a starting point, a melody. And often for me, melody comes with groove. So there, I almost, I'm, I have the, probably the strongest directions for the drummer in the band because I'm like, we need more floor time. So melody and groove kind of come together for me. And then um, after that, I fill it out with chords and um, bass lines. Um, however, um, some, with some songs that I've had, I've had a very conscious decision. Like I want to write a song about this that sounds like this. And um, I've, I've done that too. And so I'll take quite a while to ponder it and take weeks on end listening to the music that I'm trying to reference and then going how, and consciously going, how will I make it like me? And even sometimes um, myself and my, my, my brothers and sisters were all um, quite good at imitating. So I'll actually sometimes go so far as to imitate singers that I want the song to bring up the energy of or something, even if just, you know, that works for me too. I'm what I'm trying to get away from is, um, what, which is the way I would traditionally have written, doing like prototypes of things. So I do like a folk song and then do like, you know, a rock ballad. Whereas now I'm trying to write, okay, well, if this is kind of a folk song, how can I bring like a rock balladness into it? Or how can I bring, um, something West African sounding into it so it still feels like me that I'm not just imitating a genre that I like I'm 
expressing it in my own way. So I'm trying to be more hardcore about fusing and making a more conscious effort to fuse. I'm not the first to hide my life. We're talking thousands of years of hidden dreams and hidden rights. You give your all, it's never. So I'm trying to write my ideal song all the time. Like, what can I connect with? How can I connect with every single element of this? Um, and that's where, that's the sort of vague shape of how the music then takes, takes its form. I have no light, no accolade, I have no credence, little faith. I am nothing, nothing at all. The, my dream scenario is to do like really small, intimate, kind of very quiet, quiet, not quiet, but you know, very intimate um, acoustic show where I can kind of um, use the full breadth of all the in, kind of more intricate and subtle parts of the work and the songs. Um, so it's nice to be able to do a gig that um, is just giving you the seeds of the songs and in their rawest form. Um, so that's the art gig on the 21st of May. And we're gonna do it in Fumbly Stables, which is just like a plain white room. So it's very like, you know, the beginning of, the, you know, this is where it starts, um, in the plain white room. And then on the 23rd in Ballet Bar, like I think I'm ultimately a funk queen at heart and I always will be. So I kind of need to like move around and rock out and just go kind of wild. Um, so on the Saturday night in Ballet Bar on the 23rd, um, we're going to do um, the soul gig, which is just like full band, full hog from start to finish, get everyone dancing. <laughs> and yeah, it's the day of the referendum results that we're yeah, so fingers crossed we'll be celebrating. <laughs>